in but the banking it gives, business. I do, and I love the banking business because it gives them a day that we can all go hang out and do stuff together. But I don't remember it being closed on Flag Day. I don't remember. But I today remember, is a national holiday. I just remember when we were kids, well, at least when I was a kid. Uh, it was Here a big deal. Here we go deal. again already. It early, early. Deal. It was a big deal. What was the big holidays when you were a kid besides the obvious ones? Uh, let me tell you the cool thing. When I, when I was a kid. Lincoln. When I was a kid, you went to school in normal routine. You went to school until the day before Memorial Day, which was Friday before Memorial Day on Monday. That's when we got out of school. That makes sense. We went day. back to school. Tuesday after Labor, Labor Day. Day, which is normal. Now, the school systems today, I don't know where they get their particulars, but it is particularly crazy to put those kids back on the school bus August the 4th. Now, you got good friends in the school business. Yes, Speaking I do. Them. Yes, I do. And those teachers will tell you they'd rather be working Labor Day to Memorial Day. Having the kids ride a bus, as long as they ride a bus in, and a lot of the buses are air conditioned today, but a lot of buses aren't. Right. When you're talking an hour and an hour and a half on those buses in these temperatures, <laughs> not a bunch of happy campers. Air conditioning is letting the windows oh, down. Oh, I'm telling you, and letting the hot air fly in your face. I don't know why they change the school routine. And, I think and it's going to keep changing. Well, it may. Mm -hmm. It may. Um, with cutting costs, are, are there any folks sitting out there who have lost your jobs because of cutting costs in the school systems? If so, I'd like to talk to you. I want to sure see are. where they think they can cut out. They can't cut out the buses. They can't cut out the teachers, they think. And now they start cutting out pair pros, which are very, very valuable. Low-paid, hard-working folks. Speaking of school, remember uh, these pencils? You always got them in school. Yes. This is a number, number two, two pencil. If it's so popular, why isn't it number one? Well, let me tell you about number two. Number two is not made like it used to be. They don't last like they used to. They, they don't write like they, they used to. They want you to buy more They're of them. Like, That's exactly right. It's like everything else you buy today. But it why doesn't it, last. Why isn't it number one if it's so I popular? I don't know because of the, I don't know, but number two is the pencil of choice. So being number two is not always bad. No. Are you going to sing a song about the flag? Uh, oh, say can you see? You're supposed to stand up if you sing that. Don't you well, sing that I song, sing Austin? No. <laughs> You're going to get in trouble big time. We got some today. breaking news here. <laughs> Yes, we do. Oh, boy, we got anniversaries and birthdays. Let me They're tell you about somebody. The... We're going to show a photo of a gentleman that you have in the anniversary pile. I want to have Frankie, Jean, and Ben on the show one day soon. He has given more blood. You know, I see him out in his yard, and he looks like he's still alive, but the man has donated, like, gallons of blood. Wow, is he still alive? Gallons. He is still alive. He's, he's still, up, huh? He wanders through his yard and I see him out in the yard but he has donated I can't remember the exact number but we're going to show a photo of him in just a minute do you want to go through the anniversaries yeah first of all let me ask you a question they did have a NASCAR race yesterday right? they did and let me tell you your question doesn't apply today because yesterday my boy did really good so go ahead oh. make a fool of yourself go ahead well I wasn't I was just told <laughs> to ask this question on, yes you were on but my behalf. buddy Max Jones Max Jones was going to try to look my make my little little A look bad well he asked me to he ask you he can't do it today should I wait till next week no go ahead well, anyway, he's <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, man. Go ahead. He says, "What does little E Earnhardt Jr. Right. and Chick Fil A have in common? They don't work on Sundays. They're both off on Sundays." <laughs> Oh, so. guess what? Guess what? I didn't Yesterday, know. little E was on top of his game. Three of Rick Hendrick's cars finished in the first seven race cars. Yay. So, little E finished seventh yesterday. That's pretty dadgum good, 400 miles. Maybe I should have waited until next week to ask You that. should have. Yeah. It did not work today. Okay, go ahead and get your anniversaries in. Okay. Anniversaries today, well, and birthdays. Let's see. Christy and Daniel Bell. Happy, happy anniversary on, on 611. 16 years. 16 years. Daniel Bell, you are one lucky man. Aren't we all? Yes. Uh, anniversary to Frankie Jean and Ben Dorsey. That's right. 35 and, and years. 35 years, and we have a photo of Ben as he was donating blood. He is like the ultimate blood giver. So there you go. Yeah, we've got a bunch of birthdays. People are we getting do. older you by the minute here. Yeah. Martha A. Baldwin on the 14th. Happy birthday to Martha. Happy, happy birthday to Miss Martha. Holly Mullins on the 14th. Happy birthday to Holly. She gave a phone number, too. Looks like a uh, Fairmount number. No, actually, it's Ranger. Hill City. Hill City. Close <laughs> Yay. Enough. Here's another one. Caroline, Caroline Mullins on the 15th. Her precious baby. There happy you birthday. go. And Kathy Mullins Vandiver on the 14th. Happy birthday That's to right. Kathy. Happy birthday. 
And on the 14th, happy birthday to Bay Cagle. And everybody knows Miss Bay Cagle is like the actress extraordinaire who has been on the set with us quite a few times. She does some really good parts besides playing the piano, and she really plays the piano well. And happy birthday on the 14th. Alan, Alan Wigington, Wigington, happy birthday. Uh, Alan there. And a happy birthday to my uh, oldest daughter, Kay Kaylee Senior Davis, on the 13th. Happy birthday to Kaylee. Spoke to her yesterday. So. And we have another, there are two Selena Fields. We have a Facebook Selena Fields, and we have another Facebook Selena Fields. And this is our Facebook Selena Fields that is happy not an the, angel spirit. On the 14th. That's right. That's true. That's right. Happy, happy birthday to each and every one of you. And I have a very special birthday wish to my daughter on Friday. I forgot the picture of her, and that's not good because uh -oh. when we were talking about it and I said happy birthday to her, I didn't have her picture, but we will have the picture in just a few. There you go. There's my my youngest daughter, Dawn, and a happy birthday to Dawn. She spent three glorious days over in a place. This is where I had my vacation this weekend. I went on vacation. Y'all didn't know it, but I was on vacation Saturday for about four hours. Now, if you can think of a place I would go that is popular for crappy fishing, and for, um, I, I went out in a boat for four hours. So uh, the total was four hours, maybe an hour in the boat. So my vacation consisted of a four hour trip to somewhere just over the road. And I'm gonna give you a little hint. Until you said the fishing thing, I thought she was gonna say the Pickens County Jail. But no, no, oh, no. Wow. There are two gentlemen who were being honored in one of the towns we were in on Saturday. One of them's name is Teddy Gentry, and the other one is Jeff Cook. Now, do you know those two men? Mm, uh, yes, yes, I do. I think they played you in a group. Might. They did yes. play in a group. So if you can call me, we're going to have two winners right now. It's over now. If you can tell me the name of the group that they played in, and if you can tell me the name of the lake I went boating on, you're going to win. We're going to do a duo today. You're going to win a this DVD by Jennifer Danner, Small Town History, and then we're going to give a t-shirt away. So one winner gets a DVD and one winner gets a t-shirt. Call us at 866-939-2329. Now think about it, guys. Where would I go, the most least likely place in the world for me to go on vacation? Because Charlene and I talk about it quite often. There are some places in the world I'm not crazy about. Some are different time zones. This is one place I'm not crazy about, but because my child wanted me to be there for her birthday, I went. My, my, both my daughters did something very unusual this weekend. They both camped out in tents. Now, I'm their mother. Do I oh, look like I'm going to camp in a tent? I wish oh, you would do that. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. They were cooking out on Coleman stoves. They were grilling out. Love they that. were eating this fish they caught in Love this that. lake. That's good stuff. They were having a great time, and I'm going, y'all got to be kidding me. Are you sure you're my kids? You're like, where's the air conditioner and the makeup? Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. The minute, and, and Freddie said, this is funny. I stepped out uh, of the car, and the first thing out of my mouth was, it's hot. It's hot here. I don't like it here. You were sweating. I did not like the heat, but the trip was wonderful. And thank you, thank you very much to Lonnie for taking us out on the pontoon. It was fun. I want to say congratulations to, uh, uh, speaking of birthdays, this is a spiritual birthday. My, nep my uh, nephew, 10 years old, named Luke Senior, he got saved yesterday at church. Wow. I was very proud of him. So uh, thank you. Over at your mom and dad's church? No, it's the Tabernacle Baptist in Cartersville. It's where my brother and his wife go. And also, we asked prayer last week for my uh, cousin, uh, Jerry Hackney, who's suffering from brain cancer. He's taken uh, radiation treatments, and, and uh, he told the doctor, he said, I'm expecting a miracle. The doctors have given him no hope. Wow. And uh, he's told them that uh, when they go back in about a couple of weeks or a month or whatever to recheck him, that he's gonna, they're going to be surprised. Everything's going to be good. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's trusting in the Lord. So. And he's very positive yes, about Yes, he is. Um, how do you deal with that diagnosis? I don't know. How did he deal uh, with that? It's, wow. Well, he's, obviously, they're being pretty positive. My mother spoke with both of them, and they're both uh, positive that things are going to work out. He's in his mid-50s, yes. So, mm -mm -mm. there you go. Well, you never know. You never know. Well, once again, our community is doing what it does best. It is raising money. It is raising money for um, Welcome Valley Baptist Church. It is going to have a food barbecue place. Hamburgers, hot dogs, drinks, 50-50 drawing, Pastor's Choice and People Choice Awards car show.
The trophies will be awarded at 3 p.m. Registration fee is $25. This is going to be in, I believe this little church is in Ball Ground, down near where they're building the new school. And for more information, call Barbara Hawkins. And guess what? The phone numbers, there they are. 706-253-3429. David Stanley, 706-253-3103. Donna Wilson, 770-722-6905, and Glenn Hawkins, 706-253-7984. Did we have a winner on where I was this weekend? Has I anybody called anybody. in yet? Okay. Shirley Durham. What, Shirley Durham knew I was where? <laughs> I was. Oh, I Likewise. was. Y'all got to see these pictures. Adam, did you get the pictures that they emailed of the fish? Well, y'all are not going to believe these fish. I, I've never been a lake kind of girl. I've never been a, and y'all, seriously, there's there's part of the book you will die laughing over because I don't get wet. I go in the lake, but I don't get wet. I go jet skiing, I go boating, but I don't get wet. Well, after seeing what came out of Lake Weiss this weekend, I will never get in the water again. Even if the jet ski turns over, I will find a way to rise from the dead. I will not get in that water. They had catfish this big. Now, we've got pictures they won't hurt of these you. catfish. They ain't got no teeth. We have these big, brawly, muscular guys from Ludville, think about it, y'all, holding these fish. And I'm thinking, they got those out from under the dock. Now, you think you the know? catfish that big can eat you? Well, one of them bit my son-in-law's foot. Now, got no think teeth. about it. Well, he looked like well, he got, had a tooth when he bit into him. They can stick you with those fins on the side. That's about but, it. But these fish are not normal. This ain't right. These fish are on steroids. I have never in my life seen anything like it. They kept the baby fish that were like this big. The huge ones they let they put back in the water. Now you're telling fish story. You know, that's what fishermen do. It was do. huge. Yeah, they were this big. It was huge. The, the smallest one was probably 20 pounds, and the next ones weighed 35 yeah. pounds. Yeah, they eat now, a lot of stuff. They eat a lot of stuff. The bottom they suckers. eat a lot of stuff. And, and these were called flathead cats. Is that what you yeah, call it? They have, flathead blue, they cats. have blue channel cats. Well, they kept the blue channel to cook. Again, Good did stuff. I eat any of that stuff? You don't like catfish? Not like that catfish. Oh, I you, like catfish that you go in the restaurant yeah. and you think it came from a nice you, little clean river. <laughs> you don't want to see them before you eat them. Uh -uh, uh, uh -uh. No. No. But congratulations to my daughters for making it through a weekend in tents. Now, they can't be my children. I don't know where those kids came from. They both look like me. I don't know where it came from. But anyway, <laughs> both my girls spent the weekend in different areas, one on the river, one in at a lake camping in tents y'all it was 96 degrees now some of you folks out there it's got a nice little place next to a creek with some tents y'all invite her to go uh -uh. Camping. don't because i'm not going to show go up camping. no i'm not going to show up i tell you where i will be showing up <laughs> i will be showing up and you will be too at singing in the mountains, in the mountains. 2010 now the date is July the 10th, 10th. at 6 yes. p.m. Doors open at 5. Admission is free. There will be a love offering taken to help the Fannin County Christian, Christian Learning, Learning Center. Center. That's right. And it is an event. Um, it has grown and grown and grown. Back to Bethany will be there again. Cool. Yay. The Gentries will be there again. He'll be back there again. Yeah, He'll be back there again. Now, he will be there with his group. Will you do a solo? No. Just with the group? Yes. Okay. Not unless right. I don't show up. If, Not unless they don't. And myself. occasionally that happens. Occasionally <laughs> that happens. Um, for more information about the Singing in the Mountains, have they already got everything in order as far as the choir and yes, everything? They They're good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So don't need more volunteers for that ETC. We will be there with the motor home. We did that last year. We will be giving away something. I'm not sure, but Lisa Waddell is going to get us something to give away. It may be um, maybe some time off of your phone bill, maybe some money off your phone bill. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. But anyway, come by and get to know us. We will be there. And uh, hopefully it will be a packed out house. I hope so. Guess what's so cool about the place, guys? It's air conditioned. <laughs> Yay, it's air conditioned. And we have a parking place mm. right up front for the motor home. It's also air conditioned. Well, if they don't, you'll find one, right? This heat, man, it is just not you, for Y'all get her telling you the story about Gainesville a couple weeks ago with the motor home. When it was hot. Finding a place to park. Oh, no, we found a place right in no. front. <laughs> Right in front, we certainly did. <laughs> we certainly did. And then this gentleman said, oh, you really need to move right here. I said, oh, no, Bubba, we don't spend this kind of money to get here and not be front and center. So I let that <laughs> little man know right quickly that, you know, uh, advertising is what it's all uh, about. Now, right now, we do have to go to our advertisers. Here is, um, da, 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 da. we are going to show the picture of Ben Dorsey. 
who is my neighbor, and he has donated blood 144 times. Mm. Now, y'all think about it. That is 144 pricks in your arm, and you sit there. Have you ever donated now, blood? His name is what? Ben Dorsey. I thought it was Frankie, like Frankenstein. No, Frankie Jean is his wife. Because Frankenstein, that'd be kind of like Oh, all yeah, that, yeah, blood. Okay, now there's Ben. And uh, I hope to have them on the show in the near future and let him tell me why in the world was it important to you to donate blood 144 he's a, times. He's got a big heart. He does. That was pretty far. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> well, today we are going to have a big heart and we're going to share some things with you that are very, very special to me. We went back two years, and I chose a program from two years ago. Two years ago, we both looked a little bit different. Oh, yeah. And then mm. I'm going to come up one year ago. And we looked a little bit different, but we had the new set. We're going to do the old set. And there's an old person sitting on that set that you haven't seen in a long, long time. We, we were both carrying an extra person along with us. Yeah, we were. Song, we? Unless you have gone to an Inspirations concert, you haven't seen Melton Campbell in a long time. He's going to be on one thing. Only reason he's on there is cause he's at the beginning of it. What the whole goal of this was find the Father's Day special. Somehow or other in the 540 disc I have, I couldn't find the Father's Day really? special. But I went through programs, went through programs and found a Father's Day special that we're gonna share with you. We are approaching Father's Day. Sunday will be Father's Day. If you yes, are lucky will. enough to still have your father, please honor him. Please spend some time with him. You don't have to spend a lot of money on him, but spend some time with him. If you are like me and uh, no dad around to say anything to, go by and see Eddie Brackett and tell him Happy Father's Day. Good, good guy. You find somebody special in your life or Papa Jack. Um, say Happy Father's Day to the him too. <clears throat> now, I'm going to ask another question about where I was this weekend. And you're going to win another Miner's Disc. We were in a place having dinner that um, my buddy Wally Bryson owns. Ah. Well, when we walked into it, I forgot that the state of Alabama is not smoke free. Uh oh. So where would I sit? Outside. No, I sat near all them smokers. I can't believe I did that. It had a little no smoking section down here, but I propped right over here by them smokers. I forgot that Georgia is one of the states that is smoke free. Mm -hmm. Alabama's not. Now, does any of this make sense to y'all? Alabama's not. So I, we had a wonderful dinner at the Huddle House. If you can tell me the name of the town, there are two Huddle Houses that Wally Bryson owns. And one of them is near the lake we were in and one of them is up the road. So you can choose, um, we had dinner at the one up the road. Call me at 866-939-2329. And I know a bunch of y'all were with Wally Saturday night. Y'all were with him at a high school reunion while I was sitting in his restaurant inhaling smoke. So think about it. Let me know um, where you think we had dinner, which restaurant that Wally owns. He was over in Phantom with a whole bunch of his friends. And y'all will know because he talked about his restaurants that night. I'm so surprised you're not still hacking. It was pretty bad. I mean, you know, dumb me. I sit on the smoking side. Now, how dumb is that? You hate to get your silverware up and move. Took you back a few years, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it did to where my mama used to chain smoke. My brother's having a full-blown <laughs> asthma attack and mama's lighting a cigarette. And I'm going, <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. Call us at 866-939-2329 if you can tell me the name of the town. Wally has two huddle houses in Alabama. Used to have one in Georgia, but praise the Lord, he found somebody dumped that one on. <laughs> so he's only got two of these headaches. They got good food there. They have great food there. Yeah, they have like great it. food, yeah. Mm -hmm. Right now, we're going to go to some folks who talk food every day. We're going to go to our sponsors, one of them being Papa's Pizza right around the corner. And the other one being Dr. Kent. Dr. Kent, we know, is located near Papa's Pizza. I don't know that she would recommend eating off that food bar because it is one more bargain. You can get all you want for a very small price at Papa's Pizza. Go by and see the nice folks at Papa's Pizza and then go by and tell Dr. Ken that your cholesterol's gone up. <laughs> yeah, whatever, just eat off the salad bar. Uh, then you keep your cholesterol yeah. down. You've done a great job keeping yours down. I you sure have, have a family heredity thing? Blood pressure go up? No, she's pretty good to me, actually. <laughs> uh, that's, 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 another another that's another story. That's another story. That's another day. We are going to go to our sponsors, and we're going to come back, Keep and we're going to go to a program two years old. You will see that we both looked a little different. Was Center Alabama one of those towns? It was. Somebody it discussed was. that. Yes, yes it did. was. Absolutely, it was. 
He owns a restaurant in Center, Alabama and Rainsville, Alabama. So if you haven't spent any time in the state of Alabama, I suggest you go. We gave you a day trip over to DeSoto Falls Park and, and I want to say something about um, Arkansas. Some, some families were camping. Many, many families camped this weekend. This was like the perfect weekend for camping. A lot of folks were camping over at DeSoto Falls when we passed by there this weekend. It was absolutely packed. In Arkansas, 14 people now lost their lives. Mm. Some have not been recovered. They think the numbers will go up. I saw pictures of families with little children that were completely swept away yeah. from Sad. flash floods. So, you know, you think you're going to do something fun with your family and your life ends there. Mm. I mean, it just, to it's me, was absolutely amazing to see the tragedy that, that families, you know, and they were like my kids, out camping in tents, camping in their campers. They were in a travel park. They never knew what hit them. Never knew what hit them. Never mm -hmm. knew what hit them. So please say a special prayer for the families who lost their lives and um, several families lost a whole family. Yeah. So um, please say a prayer for those folks in Arkansas today. Right now we're going to take a break and we're going to go to our sponsors. We wouldn't be here if they didn't write the checks. We'll be back in just a minute. We're back. Okay, we told you we're going to take you back two years. Um, two years ago this week, we had a very, very different looking set. I had a very, very different looking co-host. He was younger. He was hotter. He was cuter. He's now gone because he's very, very busy. He got the uh, bought this trophy business, got busy, hit the road. Hit the road, Jack. He's I thought gone. you were talking about me. It's there over. No, 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 no. This one was the, he was the young punk on board then, and uh, he is gone now, but he left a lasting impression with many of you. We're going to go to just a few minutes of Melton Campbell and I on the old set. Then we're going to fast forward to something that I loved. Donovan Jones did a Father's Day special for us, and it talks about, there's one song in there, um, I think it's called Grandpa by the Judds. Love that song. And it shows your fathers, your grandfathers, your families, I think you're going to enjoy this. I tried to find the original from it, and I don't know where it is. I, you know, if I were more organized, I would know where it is. But you think about it, I got a lot of stuff in a lot of places. So anyway, this this is going to get in that Father's Day thing. But we're going to go to just a couple of minutes of Melton Campbell and I on the old set. It was very different then. Melton only worked a few months. Honestly, he was off more than he was on because when he came on board here, he ended up buying that trophy business. He had no idea what it was going to do. And it took off like gangbusters, so he really didn't have time to do this. But um, we appreciate the time he was here. And we're going to show you just a, a little tiny clip of Melton Campbell and I, and then we're going to go to the Father's Day special. It was honoring your dads. And this week is once again the time to honor your dads. Store was it in Copper Hill? Uh, to begin with, in Marietta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. This was in the 30s. Uh, in the the way 30s, even before I was born, Melton. <laughs> close. Yeah, close. Before, yeah. I, before I was born too. Okay, good. Uh, but I was born in 36. But this, before, before, but anyhow, my father was running the store for his father in Marietta. My grandfather couldn't speak English very really good. And, and what country is your grandfather from? Lebanon. Lebanon. And uh, so he couldn't speak English very well. So Papa had to drop out of school when he was in the sixth grade because his father was trying to remember the accounts in his head. Wow. And that's hard to do. So You're Papa kidding. dropped out. But he knew more, I guess, when he dropped out of the sixth grade than all of us were gra great college graduates, mm -hmm. except me. And uh, he knew more than any of us mm -hmm. but from the sixth grade. But he read a lot. Now, did he have one store in Marietta? His, he and his father were running one in Marietta, and they were having a hard time making it, very hard. So Uncle John, uh, who, they used to visit a lot back then, the old timers, and he drove. And you have to say, in order for them to visit, there were no interstates. Oh, no, no. There were no paved roads in most, most instances. It, all the roads from Atlanta back then wasn't all paved. Mm -hmm. I mean, there were some dirt roads. So in order to go visit, it wasn't like you're going to run over here and visit them. It was, it it was, was a, an effort. It was an act of love to visit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And, and Uncle John knew that they were having trouble, struggling. And he told uh, Papa, he said, honey, why don't you come up to Copper Hill? Things are good up there. And you see, they didn't. And they were good because? Of the company. Right. Everything in the And basement. it is always referred to as the company. The, com the copper company. I'm right. sorry, the copper company. Right. And it was because, and not only did it affect Copper Hill, it affected Blue Ridge, it affected Ella J, mm -hmm. it affected Murphy, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. See, it worked 3,000 men, mm -hmm. and there was only 300 people in Copper Hill. In wow. 
Yeah, so they drew from Young Harris, uh -huh. from Murphy, from Ella J, from Okoy down towards the River Road. Uh, now, in order to get 3,000 men to work at that factory, how did they transport them? Did people go by wagon? Did they go by horseback? Well, did they go by car? Uh, did they live in the hotels around Copper Hill? No, they, they traveled uh, back and forth. There wasn't that many cars back then, but uh -huh. they managed, they'd, uh, they, I think they'd probably double up. And, and, uh, so they did carpooling before it was fashionable. Yeah, but they drew from all over because it, it, they worked anywhere from 2,500 to 3,000 men. It was a big operation, a big operation. And, and so at what point did your dad finally say, let's leave Marietta and go to Copper Hill? Uh, right away when Uncle John told us, suggested it. And I, Uncle John had a building that's, uh, that is now the Mexican restaurant. Mm -hmm. And it's called the Jabley Building? Yes. Yeah. They still own it. And so Papa rented that from Uncle John. And uh, of course, it, was it started out clothing, but then we sold tires, automobile tires and truck tires. And the tires were up on, on the balcony. And we, he had a beauty shop. And he kept a, a couple of beauticians there. And he sold sewing machines, and he sold linoleum rugs, Venetian blinds, whatever. You know, he whatever. sell groceries? No, that's no, what dry I, goods, so just... Th that was the Nelson store. Okay. Just... Now, um, did you, what period of time did you go to work in this store? Well, my first job was when I was about 10 or 11 years old. Things were so busy back then. We had, I had my, my chores to do. Uh, and then, but actually, uh, Papa got sick when I, when I was uh, uh, starting my senior year in college. And I had to come home and, and take over the store because they had other brothers and sisters who were getting ready to go to college. So I came home and got it, went to work in the store. It was been about 1957. 1957, that was a great year for Chevrolet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a great Wayne year. Cars. Yeah. I had a 1957 Fairlane Ford, uh -huh. two-tone. Uh -huh. That was sharp, too. <laughs> oh, yeah, those were good-looking cars. Now, did you ever regret having to leave college and not get to graduate? Well. Not Kathy took care of that. I mean, uh, things worked out good. Hey, I have no regrets. You know, if I'd have graduated, I don't know what I'd have done, taught school or something like that. I don't know. But no, no regret. I would have liked to graduate, but you know, I'd have had uh, something to show for those four years. Mm -hmm. But no, I, I don't regret it at all. Because and what happened with your dad? Well, he was a diabetic, and he had a stroke, and it got bad, you know. So. I had to come home and take over the store. Was but, your mother involved in the business? Yes, she worked too. Mm -hmm. And back then, things were so busy, you know, you'd have three or four extra clerks working, you know, and it was a different time. It was, mm -hmm. things were very busy, yeah. And if 3,000 people, what's the population of Copper Hill today? Do you know, Kathy? No, I, I don't know what the population It's, it's about. I guess about 500 in the uh, city, yeah. I'm thinking, yeah, if there are that many. Yeah, it's increased quite a bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's increased quite a bit. Well, yeah. did, did you hear me talking about the corner where the Mexican restaurant is? Yes. How I turned it the other day, uh -huh. and I about caught that pole. That's a tight corner. <laughs> Everybody suburban. catches that. And, and I'm looking at these people standing on the corner, and I'm thinking I nearly ran over their feet. <laughs> That's a pretty close corner. It, it's close. But it was a busy happening corner, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. It was. It sure was. Right, right in the middle of town right in the middle of the town, but uh, uh, somebody, a friend of mine, this was four or five years ago, that when the, you know the train comes into, uh, mm -hmm. from Blue Ridge, what, uh, what's a, now they come twice a day sometimes, mm -hmm. but uh, it come into town and, and a bunch of people got off the train, you know, and they said, ooh, have you ever seen so many people in town? Well, these were newcomers. Oh, that was no crowd. That was no crowd. Used to, <laughs> in town, it was busy. I mean, it was really busy. And one thing we don't have today, we hope to have, but we will on another trip, pictures. Because you are a photographer. And I forgot to bring pictures. You forgot <laughs> to bring them, but that's okay. That's okay. Because after my night last night, I ran my swimming pool over, and I should have called and reminded you. But believe me, I was down there fighting water, so I didn't, uh, I didn't think about it. But yeah, next time we will have to have pictures. Because I have a picture of Mary Louise Howell Landrum and uh, my friend standing in front of the New York Hotel sign. Mm -hmm. 
and it was in the olden days and there were a lot of people you know mm -hmm. so it did look like it was a very busy very happening place it was <coughs> and, and mary is a very different of mine is she not a hoot she is she keeps me in line she counts how many times I say Copper Hill versus how many times I say Mercedes, <laughs> and she calls and lets me know. <laughs> now, let me tell you. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she is very together, and she went away. You know, she taught at Grady High School, where I went to high school, and then she came back to the mountains. Yeah. And um, when y'all came to the mountains, did you ever think of leaving? Oh, when Papa was in Copper Hill for the first uh, first month, he decided that's where he was going to stay. That's. There was one time he thought about Nelson, but that's another story. Yeah, well, we're going to talk about Nelson because your family... Okay, that was my friend Richard Jabley two years ago. He was on the show recently without his beautiful wife, Kathy. Here you got to see his beautiful wife. It's been two years, and Richard has not aged one bit. Yeah. What happened to nicer. you and I? We've aged a little bit. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Well, we're going to go now to something that Donovan Jones did for us. It is a Father's Day tribute. Father's Day is approaching this week. I don't have a new Father's Day tribute. So we decided I'll go back in time. I have the archives. I can do this. This is Father's Day two years ago. The photos that you submitted, the, the photos that I gathered, honoring the people who mean a lot to us. Now, you did something with your dad Friday. Is mm -hmm. this kind of your prelude to Father's Day? Yeah, I'm going to church with him Sunday also, though. So it'd be good. But you I went, went fishing, fishing with him, with him? Friday at Lake Altoona. Do you like to fish? I love it. Did had, you? A, had a good time. Did yeah. you? It was hot, but we had a good time. It was hot, y'all. We caught it a bunch. Of, we caught a bunch of big brim. And what are you going to do with them? We gave them away to the neighbor. Oh, okay. Yeah, he okay. just loved it. He came out with a bucket and got them all. Did you clean them? No, no he, we the, the neighbor, neighbor does. Yeah. Okay, all right. See, that's another part of fishing. We just I like catching them. Yeah, yeah. We used a big old I, bunch of crickets yeah, to catch them with. No, I did Live crickets? Yeah. You put them on the thing live? Oh, yeah. You did? You just take and hook them right there? Oh, Lord. There's two ways you can hook them good. Yeah, I mean, okay, go ahead. Well, first of all, <laughs> Brim, they like to bite the head off the cricket. Oh, they will. They? That's the first thing they go for. So you try to run the hook up from their stomach up to their neck, and that way when they bite on the he head. He just hung a cricket for all you animal activists. Don't call in. <laughs> well, the store sold them to us, you know. Okay. But we, you know, what's, what's bad? We spent $4 on a tube of crickets, and they used to cost a dollar. Wow. Just a few years wow. ago. Wow. It's terrible. Wow. Well, you know, the only difference in men and boys, the price of their toys. Yeah. So, does your dad still do the worm thing? Oh, yeah. He's got tons of them. And his brother here in LJ does, too. So, he's, if you need he sells worms. nationwide. Oh, that is. He ships worms. Yeah. By the, by the pound. Okie dokie. His, his name's Floyd Senior, right here in LJ. You look him up. Oh, wow. That is funny. Tons of them. Okay. Right now, we are going to our tribute to Father's Day. Um, Father's Day is this coming Sunday. Happy Father's Day. Do something for Happy your Father's dad. Day. Are While you the merry bells keep ringing, Happy Father's Day to you. Was that a Christmas song? Yeah, that's Andy Williams. Yeah. <laughs> I started I to I say. I thought I would transition okay. it into Father's Day. Right now, we are going to our Father's Day tribute. This is two years old. This is done by Donovan Jones. Donovan has graduated from high school now. He is going on to college. That means somebody's got to take his place in doing these little clippets for me because he did a great uh -oh. job. So we are going to honor Donovan Jones today as we show you this Father's Day tribute, two years old. Grandpa, everything is changing fast. We call it progress. Just don't know And Grandpa Let's wander back into the past Then paint me the picture Of long ago Lovers really fall
Starched white shirts, button at the neck, and he'd sit in the shade and watch the chickens peck. And his teeth were gone, but what the heck? I thought that he walked on water. Said he was a cowboy. When he was young, he could handle a rope, and he was good with a gun. And my mama's daddy was his oldest son, and I thought that he walked on water. And if the story was told. Said, son, here's a pony. Keep her at a trot. And I'd ride in circles while he laughed a lot. Then I'd flop down beside him. And he was 90 years old in '63. And I loved him, and he loved me. And Lord, I.
Tell me about the good old days Sometimes it feels like This world's gone crazy Grandpa Take me back to yesterday When the line between right and wrong Didn't seem so hazy Did lovers really fall Welcome back to North Georgia Now Today. Now today we have been talking to an exceptional man. Okay, that's about as many dads as Donovan could get on there. Lots of songs, lots of dads. Um, if your dad was honored there and you are still lucky enough to have him, congratulations to you. Spend some time with him. If your dad was on there and he's gone, then that truly is a great memory for you. Um, I noticed several of the guys were older gentlemen. I know Carl Ed Abernathy is gone from us now. So, um, that was that was pretty cool to see. That was yeah. pretty cool to see. Donovan did a good job. Need to go back and look at those every now and then. Yeah, you do, and and it uh, yeah, it takes you back just a little bit. I'm gonna take you back one year now. We're gonna go back one year to a gentleman. His name is Willie Young. He is a Vietnam veteran. I met him because Joyce Bryson has known him, I think, forever. He is from up in the Epworth community. He's a Vietnam veteran. He is a community activist. He is a go-getter he's a he's a positive man and we're going to share a little bit about willie young with you maybe six to seven minutes of his interview and then we're going to move on to a little bit of the live show in mccaysville georgia the first live show we ever did we are still working on doing some new live remotes we want to do that we enjoyed being out among you i think the i guess the most memorable one for me will be mccaysville it was our first live remote. I rented a couple of cabins. A whole bunch of us went up there and spent the night. We had a great time. The community welcomed us. And, and I think that was my beginning of my love affair with the little tiny town of McKaysville and Copper Hill. Love the community, but love the people. Willie Young is a big part of that community. We are going to go to just a little bit, maybe six or seven minutes of him. As we honor, we are approaching the 4th of July. We will, <coughs> we will not be working on Monday, the day, which is the official holiday. We will do a rerun. But we want to honor anybody who has served. You know, we are independent because of men like Willie Young. Yes. Was your dad a veteran? No. Uh, I have an uncle who was. Okay. His brother. There are so many people sitting out there, families who will be honoring the fallen. Um, Willie Young is lucky enough to still be around and still be around and very active. If you know a veteran, say thank you to him. As we approach the 4th of July, it is a very important day in America. Right now, we are going to go to Mr. Willie Young. This was one year ago yesterday, I believe. He was on, I believe it was Monday. When you see my co-host, you'll know I believe it was Wednesday because I believe it's Charlene. So there you go. Um, we're going to go to Charlene. I believe it's Charlene and I as we interview Mr. Willie Young, and he talks a little bit about his involvement in the Vietnam era. We're going to back up just a tiny bit. We went beyond Willie Young, and we went to something else. We're going to come back just a little bit. You know, we got reverse on this thing. Will you throw that thing they're, in reverse? They're working on <laughs> it, yeah. Let me tell you about boats. They also have reverse, and this weekend, I decided a pontoon is the way I need to go. A jet ski is the way I go. A pontoon is relaxing. It has reverse. It has all these. The jet ski I ride does not have reverse, and I hit a big wall and crunch. Because it didn't have reverse. If that bad boy had had reverse, I wouldn't have done that. Willie Young is in reverse, and they are backing it up and going to get him ready. You didn't damage the boat, did you? Uh uh, no. That's not very convincing. <laughs> no, that was that was a while back. That was a while yeah. back when I did that. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I'm lucky it didn't break my silly neck. <laughs> But I am the wild child on the water, and I can't help that. There's something about this gear in me that says release the tension, the same, release the pressure. You're the same way on 515. Shh, hush now, hush now. Yes, you are. Hush now. Right now, we are going to go to Mr. Willie Young from the Epworth community. 
Here we go. We're getting it ready, y'all. We are. I promise you. And this is on the new set, too. He said it's going to be a minute. The other one was the old set. Now, y'all, do you want to vote which set do you like the best? We vote for this one, don't we? Well, yeah. Is this more comfortable? Oh, it's more comfortable. I like the yeah, chair. Yeah, I know you do. Does, does everybody know the story about where these chairs came from? Brenda Evans design? No, they were in the bathroom. Oh, they were. <laughs> They were in the bathroom well, and I walked in there one day and I said, these are really nice chairs. What are they doing in the bathroom? So I jerked them out, brought them out here. I've and always we wondered, designed, Brenda Evans came in here and designed a set around these chairs that came out of the bathroom. I'm always wondering what that <laughs> smell was. No, it does not smell. He is so full of it. Maybe that's what I smell. <laughs> Right now, we're going to go to somebody who smells like springtime. Mr. Willie Young, quit making fun of <laughs> Don't do that to me. This is a man who has been honored to serve his country, and now we are honored to to show him Willie Young's and to getting salute, a lot of airtime. To salute every single soldier serving or now serving. Why don't we just go, go to the community We're going to go to the community calendar for just a minute, and then we'll be back with Willie Young. <laughs> by Willie Young. Now, you've been a guest before when we talked about your family history. Yes, ma'am. Today, we're going to talk about Vietnam. It, it, we are approaching the 4th of July. It is Independence Day in America. It is a time that we honor all soldiers. We honor um, America's independence. And today, more than ever, don't you think that's a very important thing to talk about? Yes, ma'am. Now, being a Vietnam vet, um, have you ever had negative things happen to you? Well, all down through the journey we have some, but you know, I look at it this, try to look at it this way. If somebody throws you a lemon, try to make lemonade. You got that right. You're right. You so, got that right. Well, I want to ask you something. Is this you? Yes, ma'am. He was a hottie. <laughs> <laughs> a young you. See, I never think about Vietnam. How old were you? 18? No, I was 22 years old. 22 uh, years old. 21. 21. What 21. about that? Now, Imagine leaving the community you grew up in and ended up in a foreign country like Vietnam. How did you handle that? Well, first of all, I went to boot camp in Great Lakes, then went to San Diego, California, then to well, Going to Great Lakes, Michigan's enough to shock you to death. Port Wyneme, California, so then I went from there to Guam, uh -huh. from Guam down to Yap Island, then come and back. And this is Da Nang. Now, we have all heard about Da Nang. Yeah. And we have all heard about the things that went on there. And then from Guam, we were supposed to come back home, but we went to Da Nang, uh -huh. 19, September 1965. Have you seen the movie Good Morning Vietnam with Robin uh, Williams? I've seen some, yeah, some, yeah. some of the movies. Yeah, um, yes. it's a true story. How realistic do you think it was? Well, I don't know if I saw that particular one or not, okay. but uh, okay. there's a lot of fiction goes into <clears throat> to some of the movies, uh -huh. you know, to make it more. I think this one was pretty realistic, and I remember Robin Williams did an awesome job. He was a radio operator there, and he was trying to keep things positive and upbeat and keep the negatives away, and he had a lot of trouble with the military. How, how much of the truth did you see in Vietnam, and how much do you think was covered up? Well, a lot of it was covered up. For example, President Nixon said that we have no troops in Cambodia. Uh -huh. And at the same time he was saying it, 
there's a boy right here in LJ that was in the army. He was in Cambodia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you know they, you know how politicians are. Some of them, they'll tell anything to get the job done. <laughs> Most of them will. I mean, Sometimes they do. You're yeah. right. So uh, that's some of the people that were there. Some of the they had bicycles were a uh -huh. common way of getting. A, around and uh, that's me and uh, two Denying other. 1965, yeah. that is amazing. That yeah. is, oh man, that is incredible. You're so lucky to have these photos now. Do you ever uh, put, put on them disc all over to on save disc. them? Everything, okay. everything's okay. on disc. And here's a couple that's awesome. more that was. <clears throat> this you? Yeah, that's 1965. Wow. And wow. This one's 1964 in San Diego. Now, Navy, were you drafted? No, uh, I, I went in voluntarily. Uh, uh -huh. Let me say this about, actually it was a CBs as part of the Navy. Uh -huh. We were, uh, it's an organization that does construction work for the Marines, Air Force, Army. We, we did it for everyone. And uh -huh. Here's a brief history <coughs> of the CBs. <coughs> During World War II, there was a rear admiral by the name of Ben Morell, chief of the Bureau of Navy Docks. He wanted to find a way to uh, get construction done because you couldn't have civilians out there on the front line defending themselves because they would be, uh, they just couldn't do it according to the uh, rules that they had. Right. So he started a, uh, the Seabees and they built this, uh, they built bases and different things. And here's one thing that uh, General MacArthur said about the Seabees, General of the Army. The only trouble with you Seabees is that you don't have enough of them, General Douglas MacArthur. Now, this was coming from a man from a different branch. Mm -hmm. But the Seabees are involved in many things. They uh, do a lot of things for the local people in Vietnam. They weren't just there to to build things, we built airstrips, we built building pads, we did a lot of things to help the local people. That's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. If you can get the local people on your side, then you've uh, accomplished something. I think we're seeing that in Iraq today. Yeah. Because the people, you know, the freedom to them, freedom. Can you imagine freedom? And, and they are now looking at a positive with the American people, not that you've come here to destroy us, but you're going to help us rebuild. So it's, it's a very different time yeah. now, isn't it? Right. And during the Korean War, the Navy realized that they needed an airstrip in Cuba Point in the Philippines. <clears throat> and they was going to get a civilian contractor to do this work because it wasn't in a war zone at that. So they said it couldn't be done. They called the Navy in. The first CBs arrived was MCB-3. That's my old outfit. Uh-huh. Mobile Construction Battalion 3. Lee, we need to get this. October the 2nd, 1951, followed by MCB 5, November the 5th, 1951, and over the years there's other outfits added to it. But the CBs have played a big part in every major thing that have happened. Uh -huh. A lot of people never heard of the CBs. It's a very small outfit. It's part of the Navy. Uh -huh. But we don't go aboard ships. We do, uh, you know, we dress like the Marines. We take military training mm -hmm. with the Marines at Camp Pendleton, California. North Carolina or Cal California? No, we, we didn't yeah. go to North Carolina. At Camp, Camp Pendleton. June is in North Carolina, yeah, right. isn't it? We yeah. went to a uh, rifle range, and you've got a, <clears throat> usually you get a, some kind of a something if you hit the target instead of the, an officer. <laughs> And this is some of the sea rations that we had. That's a you pick know, on. Willie, if we open this, reckon what this is? Uh, it'd be hard to say. A love will explode. <laughs> Lordy me. I don't had, think we'll uh, open it, do you? But you know what it says on it that I think is so interesting? American Bread Company, Nashville, Tennessee. This was locally produced for soldiers to eat in the field. Right. What you reckon's in here? That's a pick on roll. Yeah, that's what it says, pecan. Pick on roll. We had ham and lima beans, which yeah. was people didn't like too well, but my job in the service, I run heavy equipment, a D8 Caterpillar. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and you could take this ham and lima beans and lay them on a manifold of a D8, uh -huh. and they got real hot. If you didn't forget and leave them there, if you did, you'd <laughs> explode. 
<laughs> and you're talking about something that tastes good after about 20 minutes on that uh, microphone. Ooh, do you smell lima beans and hammocks? Blowing? I don't want lima beans. I don't care if they're hot or cold. <laughs> you know what? I was just thinking the same Ooh. thing. Pecan roll, yes. I wish we could have opened that Ham, pecan yes. roll. Now, talk about a little piece of history. That that can of pecan roll was over 40 years old. It's that probably is, petrified. I just wonder. I don't know if it's sealed correctly. What do you think about that? I wouldn't want to eat it. Well, sea rations, I don't know about this. We're going to go now to my one of my favorite experiences ever with doing this program. We had only been on the air a few months, and we came up with this brainstorm to go out into the field and do live remotes with you. Well, you showed up and we showed out. We had some great food. We were at the Nifty 50. Our first live remote was held where today the community meal continues. 17 months into the works, the community meal has now fed over 12,000 meals to the hungry, to the hurting, to the lonely, to the people who just need some companionship. It has been an amazing journey and it started just like we did. Our first live remote was at the Nifty 50. So we want to honor Wanda Pittman and the group at the Nifty 50 who continue to do this meal. It is based on volunteers. 14 of the churches have come on board now and I think a couple of extras. If you would like to be involved in the community meal, you can call Joyce Bryson at 706-492-2115. She books the churches who prepare the meal that is served today from 4 o'clock to 6 o'clock for $1. You can come and hang out with everybody. You can have the, a great meal. You can have the fellowship. You can enjoy the beautiful river from the view just like we saw at the Nifty 50 Cafe. Now this is old. This footage is old. I looked a couple years. old. Come on, get over it. I looked old. I was so gray. You finally admit it. Yeah, I was so gray. And a little bit of that gray's gone now. And only my beautician knows the truth. <laughs> so, yeah. Where, where did she put it's it? It's called low lights. So, um, but this is a day. It was a fun day. I really hadn't spent much time in this area until that weekend. I went up and rented a couple of cabins. We hung out. We cooked. We actually did a couple of Heart of, Heart of the Homes up there that day, too. And, and the Heart of the Homes featured some of my very favorite people, um, Carl Ed Abernathy, uh, Delane Deals. Who else was there that day? We had a really good Too day. We had, a, we had a lot of fun, and it, it kind of started my little... I make trips to that love area affair. quite often now. Yeah. I, I do love that area. And I designed a t-shirt that says, Where Mountains, Rivers, and Good Friends Meet. And that is a great, and the t-shirts are available over at the Woodland Express Mini Mall. But it says what I feel about that community. Rivers, Mountains, and Good Friends Meet it is a great place to meet. If you haven't had an opportunity to see McKaysville, Georgia, I suggest you do it. And Copper Hill. Spend some time. Copper Hill and Ducktown. And We're going to have the mayor of Ducktown on Town. next week. That's right. We're going to have the mayor of Ducktown on next Monday, and we're going to talk a little bit about the Ducktown, um, the Miners Day celebration. So this is a time when everybody is celebrating. It is almost the 4th of July. Right now, we're going to celebrate our first live remote ever at McKaysville, Georgia, the Nifty 50. He's a 13-year-old race car driver. He made an absolute impression on me. He was awesome. I Does anybody remember? I know. You can. <laughs> Do you remember, <laughs> Mr. Mole? Who was it? You don't remember his name. Tell me a little bit about him. Show him that shirt. Now I'm gonna give you a hint what his name might be. What's his name? Logan Ruffin. Logan Ruffin, 12, he has started racing when he was 12 years old, he's 13. Now give Mr. Mole, this is an autographed shirt. Do not wear it to the garden. Do not let your precious <laughs> white Marjorie sleep in it. You keep it and, and you frame it because this boy will be a NASCAR champion quickly. Well, you, <laughs> you right. okay, okay. He, he is a good, good kid. Like so many guests we've had, right. we have rounded up some awesome people. Some super we have people. rounded up some awesome guests. We have almost been on the air now 100 days. Wow. Friday will be our 100th show. Wow. And we thought coming to McKay'sville would be a nice way to That's celebrate. Right. What I you wanna, think? I want to I wanna tell you, you know, talking about nice and sweet people, I want to thank all the people for coming out here today because Absolutely. This, is, this is awesome turnout. Thank you so much. That Give yourself right. a hand. 
thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And without you, right. we wouldn't be here no, today. No, none of, none of us no, would. No, no, and it has been such a journey mm -hmm. and such a pleasure. So many, you know, it was risky business. We weren't sure, we didn't know. Right. Um, I didn't come to this area very often. Mm -hmm. And now I am the queen of McKaysville because <laughs> I'm in McKaysville three days a week. We get so, so many calls from people and then when we're on the road, me and Matt, a lot of times people say, we see you on the, the web, we watch you on ETC3 right. on the web. And, and it's just it's just been phenomenal, right. the, 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 the uh, response we've got. It's amazing and, and we love the idea that y'all have turned out today. Now Angela and Sherry, Sherry come here a minute. We're gonna give you and Ange some coupons and y'all are gonna to go out and give everybody one of the coupons for the half gallon Mayfield ice cream okay. and then we're gonna do if you have a flyer if you came here with one of my signed flyers I know there are a couple of them then we're gonna give you a gift basket and I know I saw one earlier you got one yep. come here a minute uh. okay if you have a flyer with my signature on it there you go so there you, you go. Know you can put it on eBay. You got right. one right there. No, you keep it. You keep it. There you go. We got one more. There you go. Now, does anybody else have signed flyers? I put out six. So if you don't have one, shame on you. You ought to go <laughs> shop at some of these stores. I put them everywhere. So. That's right. <laughs> but there are four missing. So that is so cool. Um, today is going to be about your area. We're going to talk about the things that matter here. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about the economy. We're going to talk about rafting, which is one of the big things. Have you ever rafted the Okoye? We have. I haven't the Okoye. We went down the Nanahala. Honey, you're a wussy if you uh, hadn't done That was a fun day. It that was. That was a fun day. Busy day. A very busy day. We had Krispy Kreme donuts that day. We had uh, Mercier's Orchards brought food. That was a day Miss yeah. Adele Mercier was with us. So many people who are now living legends in this area. There was more food than I could eat. There was a lot of food. We're going to go now to a living legend here at ETC. We're going to go to RNA Orchards. RNA Orchards yeah, is like fourth generation. I just did a little clip it up there the other day with um, Shade went up and we made strawberry cobbler. It's strawberries. This is the first year that RNA Orchards has really, really focused on strawberries. They did a great job with it. They will go from strawberries to peaches, peaches to apples. Then they have the full-fledged gardens. You can find anything you need that is grown in a garden. You don't have to sweat. You don't have to hoe. You don't have to get out and dig taters because Andy and Jennifer and the kids are up there doing it That's for your, you. your kind of life, isn't it? It is my kind of life. Pull up and say, give me 10 pounds of this and 5 pounds of this. They have amazing, amazing produce at RNA Orchards. It is um, fourth generation. Roger Fudge is the head honcho here. He is also, well, maybe Ann is the head honcho up I'd there. I'd say so. Because Ann has more time to be involved in that business. But it is an amazing family business. Since we filmed this, there is a new family member, a precious little boy who was with me when we did Strawberry Cobbler. He wasn't in the picture then. He wasn't even in their mind then, but he is now, uh, he's he a likes year strawberries. old. Yes, he does, yes, he does. <laughs> so right now, we're gonna honor our, our next live show was at r &A Orchards here in Gilmer County. It is located on Highway 52. If you Parking. would like to, if you would like to see the best, freshest produce in town, go by and meet the nice folks, fourth generation and learn a little bit more about what it's like to be, you know, they are just farmers. They're yes, just they farmers. That's what they do full time. And good so, fried pies too. Great fried pies, great fried pies. And you know, there's something else. They have chicken salad, they have chicken and dumplings. Um, they have a good uh, Philly steak sandwich. They have a variety of food. And the most important thing, they have restrooms. They do, clean ones. <laughs> and they serve Mayfield ice cream, so oh, there you boy. go. Right now, let's go to our, our next live remote was done in Gilmer County. We, we hope to get to do this again someday, soon, we hope, because uh, we liked being out among you, and I think you liked us being out there. So right now, let's go back to a live show at RNA Orchards. According to the weatherman, we have been blessed with a lot of rain. Now, this fourth generation farm needed the rain, didn't it? Andy, what do you think about this rain? It's been a godsend. It has been a godsend, and we have prayed for rain. Our governor said pray for rain. We did, and it has been a great spring and now a really good summer. 
Yes, we're having a wonderful year. Got a wonderful crop of fruit, and everything looks good. And we have to say the two little ones sitting in your lap are fourth generation RNA orchard. That is correct. And it started with first generation Ann's parents. Right. In what year? 47. 1947. 1947. Cut up before I was born. Well, <laughs> I'll just go ahead sure. and tell you, it was right before I was born, too. <laughs> well, you know what? Can you imagine that your children got to stay at home and work and they've never had to go into the city? They've never had to look for employment. They had it. They had it. Isn't that wonderful? That's a blessing. Of course, it's hard work. It is hard work. It is hard work. And I have to say, the precious child sitting in your lap makes a mean peach cobbler. Yep. Somebody told me that it was really good, and I think Papa said that last time she made one, Daddy ate the whole thing. Did Daddy eat the whole thing? I ate every bit of it. <laughs> that is amazing. How old are you, eight years old? Eight. And who taught you to cook? My mom. Your mom. Isn't that cool? Now, not many eight-year-olds can cook. Do you help here on the farm otherwise? Yes. Do you pick peaches? Yes. Squash? No. No. <laughs> Have you ever had a squash casserole? No. No, I love squash. I want to know what she likes better, peaches or apples? Both. Both. No, you don't have Both. a favorite? <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. There's no bad season at RNA Orchards, is there? As to who taught her to drive a truck and a truck? Somebody told me very young you learned to drive a truck and a tractor. Who taught you? My dad. Your dad. Did Papa have a little bit to do with that, too? I thought he might. Now, the RNA stands for a certain something, and it's a family name, isn't it? <clears throat> when you, you are the fourth generation, do you think the fifth generation will continue that name? I but think if so. If they do, they have to put another letter on there. RNA uh, and then some? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> RNA and Jessica, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's Amanda. Where's Jessica? Right. That's Jessica. And that is Anna Grace. That's <laughs> Oh, it's like kinder care. Y'all yeah. <laughs> should have worn name tags. <laughs> now, Roger, when you married Ann, did you think this is where you'd spend your life? Had no clue. <laughs> you came up here and thought City Slicker's going to get yeah. up here and just get him a cushy job, didn't yeah. you? Well, see, Ann, Ann didn't want to move back. I'm the one wanting to move back. Really? But, but uh, uh, you know, the Lord's been good to us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So. And this has been a phenomenal year for all your fruits and vegetables. Right. It's just right. been great. I was out here about three weeks ago taking pictures. We were very lucky because that was a very hot time. But everything was beautiful. And so far, so good. Everything's done well, hadn't it? There was no frost, no freeze to damage anything well, this year. The, the good Lord's blessed us so far, so we just keep praying that, mm -hmm. that he'll continue to bless because, you know, with the afternoon thunderstorms, you worry about Oh, yeah, the hail, damage. Hail oh, yeah. How much rain did y'all get yesterday, Andy? We got three inches. Wow, I knew. I sat in Gilmer County for over an hour waiting to drive home. Anybody who knows me knows I don't drive in the rain much. <laughs> and that wasn't just normal rain yesterday. It was pretty tough. It was pretty so, a lot of rain. Mm -hmm. I sat there a long time waiting on it to kind of die down. And I figured it was getting about an inch an hour. So, yeah. Now, did that damage anything? Are you okay with that? Everything's we're back. Lord, I'm starved to death. Good looking fruit. You know, I make uh, really good looking fruit. Make sure you check out any of our apple houses in this area. We have so many people who actually make a living growing the apples that are produced mm -hmm. right here in Gilmer County. Bill, yes. have you got a couple more birthdays? Yes, we do. Uh, let's see. Speaking of grocery stores, Taylor Engel on That's the 13th. Right. Happy birthday. And, of course, she might be on Little House on the Prairie. Uh -huh. uh, Inez Kirby, vacuum cleaner lady. Uh, 88 years old on the 13th, <laughs> Inez Kirby from her sister. I know Miss Inez Kirby. Happy, happy birthday to you from Dorothy her sister, Hampton. Dorothy Hampton, who worked for a long sweet. time at Walmart with uh, Miss Betty Jordan. And we want to say please continue to pray for Betty and Shorty. Um, Betty is resting well at home. And um, we encourage you to please continue to add them to your prayer list. Right now we're going to go to a lady who um, has had a lot of prayers from her fans, Miss Donna Fargo. And we're going to do just one little tiny, maybe two minutes of this. This is one of my favorite travels and trips ever. We went up to Brentwood, Tennessee. We took over a beautiful bed and breakfast and we interviewed Miss Donna Fargo. This was a day I'd waited a long, long time for. She has battled multiple sclerosis since she was 27 years old. Mm. She is a very positive young lady, a very focused lady. She does writings, poetry. She doesn't do the, the music thing like Wanda Jackson is still out singing. 
This is an interview we had to show some of her, we had to listen to some of her music as it was recorded because she doesn't still do that anymore, but she does amazing writings. She is very inspirational and maybe because she was diagnosed with MS at 27 years old. It turned her life around and I think that she, through her writings, has turned a lot of other lives around. This week on Thursday, I'm going to have a counselor here. I hope we'll um, touch you in some way. If, if you have the ability, if you have the talent like Donna Fargo, share it with those, others. If you can counsel and help people to get through a tough time, share that with others. We're going to talk a little bit about possibly doing something to help the community that won't cost folks um, any money. We're going to maybe do a seminar that's free. Because I Good. have learned through my email, so many of you are sitting out there hurting. I suggest you do like Donna Fargo, pick up the pieces and go on. Um, at 27 to be diagnosed as she traveled with the number one song, to be told that your life will change drastically. Her life did change drastically, but yeah. she is uh, an amazing spirit and I hope you will enjoy just a couple of minutes of this interview with Donna Fargo. They have, the school I wound up teaching at was just great. You know, the, in fact, when I interviewed for the job, the gentleman said, well, if you were my daughter, I'd want you to teach at this particular school or this district. And I wound up teaching there. But, um, you know, I wanted to spread my wings and stuff. And so he lived in California and we were buddies and he was my hero. And I thought, well, I'm just going to go to California. And, you know, I didn't know from what else except I'm was there a, a rebellious job. okay was there a rebellious side to Donna Fargo oh just a you know I was always <laughs> asking why about everything uh -huh. I just wanted to explore uh -huh. you know I remember a teacher once saying to me can't you ever just learn something for the, the joy of learning it why do you have to ask why all the time <laughs> you know like with numbers I'm not good with numbers and and I'd say well, why do we have to learn this you know and she'd say that's what she said to me I don't think I ever ask another question in school <laughs> Now talk about teaching in California. Did you make an impact on children? I hope so. I was really strict because mm -hmm. they'd try to take advantage of How you. How know, old were you then? I was just fresh out of college. But in California, to, to teach in secondary school, you have to have five years of college instead of four. And I only had four. So mm -hmm. in between like uh, summertime and night uh, nights, I would go to night school in the summertime. And I made up that extra year so that I could get my general secondary credential. But I taught all the same time. You just teach on a provisional credential. And I had a great time teaching. I, I was probably a little too strict at first, but then I mellowed down and stuff. But I really loved it. I kept them busy and, and involved and I wouldn't let them mess around and that kind of thing. Do you feel that to teach is to touch a life? Okay, one of my very favorite people in the whole world, Miss Donna Fargo. Every morning, y'all would crack up laughing. I sleep with my cell phone, purely because I'm on call 24-7 because of trucking. I sleep with this cell phone, and it wakes me up with Happiest, happiest girl, girl in the in Whole the USA. USA. Um, I never tire of hearing that song, and I, and I never tire of the meaning of that song. Make the very most of every single day in your life. Don't let anything get you down. Don't let anything take you down. She wrote that song, and then three years later was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So I guess it's a good thing she was the happiest girl in the whole USA. Today's program is going to end with something <clears throat> that we, um, it was produced here at ETC very shortly after I came on board here. I asked a special favor. I had a friend who was dying of cancer, and I asked that he come on the program as a special, not as a guest then, because I wasn't sure we could get through it. With him was my daughter Dawn and her friend Rachel. Um, Rachel has now gone on to be involved in a Georgia Public Broadcast special that has been aired all over the place. It is about drug addiction. Last night when I sat and watched Matt Wilson's rerun about meth and about the um, seminar that was held here in the county a couple of weeks ago, I knew that it was time to share a little bit of Danny's story. We've never aired Danny's story in its entirety. I think we should. I think now is a time as we approach summer and the kids are out of school and they might get bored, they might get this, they might get that. If you've seen the new meth commercials, you will understand how important this is to me. Danny's story could be your story. It is my story. My child was a meth addict for many, many years. Um, Danny was her drug dealer at one point in time. There were several other people that I knew um, were dealing drugs to my child. That is a tough thing to do. I will tell you in the, in the last few weeks, I have 
we've gone through some counseling, we've gone through some problems. I understand now why my child was involved in drugs. I understand that we can, as parents, make a difference. Um, I did not handle it correctly. I put her in a drug treatment facility and that was not exactly what needed to be done. But you have to step up and do whatever you think is right at the moment. Right now, we're gonna share just a little bit of Danny's story. I will make it available to you. If you would like to have copies of this to use, um, possibly in church meetings, possibly in AA meetings, in um, Al-Anon, if, if you are involved in anything about recovery, I will get you a copy of Danny's story. It's about an hour and a half in its entirety, but we're gonna go to just a little clip from it. Danny Gaddis passed away. Um, he is one of those fathers that was shown on our Father's Day tribute. His young son, Jamie, graduated from high school this year with honors. He and Becky could have been killed because their home blew up because Danny was on oxygen right toward the end. They lost everything. Today we're gonna to honor um, a very special dad. He um, possibly contributed to my daughter's drug addiction, but later in life he made amends. He was saved not long before he died, and I would like to share just a little bit of Danny's story with you. Battle with cancer. So I want you to, we're not gonna use last names. We're gonna be on a first name basis. And when we leave here, I hope that you will feel and, and find a compassion for people who have turned their lives around. Welcome, Danny. Thank you, Sherry. You and I have had a 14-year relationship. Our children are friends. Yes, ma'am. Our children are friends. My child um, actually became your child's friends in school when kids would bully your son. Is that right? And Nick would always come home in trouble and the teacher would send a note and say somebody picked on Jamie and Nick stood up for Jamie again. I didn't know your story then and I didn't know that um, you were in prison for drug dealing and I certainly didn't know at that time that you had dealt drugs to my other child, Dawn. Did I? I didn't. And, and, and through many years of, um, I think I invited Jamie to the first birthday party he was ever invited to, didn't I? Yes, ma'am. Nick came in one day and he said, Mom, mm -hmm. I want to invite Jamie to my party. And I said, Nick, mm -hmm. your friends are mean to Jamie and they treat him terribly because his dad's a drug dealer. And Nick said, I don't care. He said, Jamie is my friend. And you had just gotten out of prison and had begun to turn your life around, hadn't you? Yes, ma'am. And you did a great job of turning your life around. You've been clean now how many years? Uh, March 21st, I'll be clean eight years. Eight years. What a remarkable story. Now, Dawn, you've been clean how long? For about 15 months. 15 months. Rachel, how long have you been clean? I've been clean about 15 months. 15 months. You have twins now? You have four-year-old twins? Yes, ma'am. You have a success story. You do not have medical issues from your years of drug addiction, do you? No, ma'am. Dawn, you do, don't you? Yes, ma'am. My nurse practitioner, who is also your medical caregiver, gave us some really bad news this year. But that's life, and we deal with it every day, and we, you have a 50-50 chance that you'll make it. Right. And, and by the grace of God, and this program is, the grace is God's, because it really is, and Danny knows that. Danny walked into my office yesterday <clears throat> and told me that he has just been dealt one more blow, He's been clean eight years. He's had a remarkable eight years with his child, Jamie. But Danny has been diagnosed with cancer. It's um, so far affecting his lungs, his esophagus and your trach, is that right? Yes, ma'am. That's right. And, and you gave me a really good success story. You quit smoking. Yes, ma'am. You quit smoking. And what's the name of the pill you took? Uh, Syntax. Shantax, is and, that the name of it? You know, everybody the hollers that it's expensive. Uh, it's, you know, 130 or 140 bucks a month. I spent 300 on cigarettes. That's right, that's right. So, I mean, you know, it's just not a big deal if it works. That's right. And uh, it's something that anybody that's smoking should try, I think. I mean... Did it help you quit? It does cold work. Cold turkey or...? I mean, just, just really and truly, you take it for one week, you take half a dose. And, uh, they encouraged me to smoke that week. And then after that week, I just quit. Occasionally, I get upset and I smoke a cigarette. It tastes terrible. I smell like. Mm -hmm. It uh, smells when, terrible, when, doesn't it? If you smoke a cigarette and walk by me 10 feet from me, 
You smell terrible. Mm -hmm. I've been smelling like that to people for 35 years. Yeah, yeah. But, but now, we, we're going to talk about positive things because, um, because Nicholas was a positive child. I met Jamie, and when you were in prison, I bought Jamie Christmas, and I didn't know that you had been my other child's drug dealer. But I didn't judge you, and I didn't do bad things to Jamie. I just knew that in God's plan, it all works out. And eight years later, when you walked into my office yesterday, this is a very quick interview we're doing. And, and when I called on last night and you called, Rachel, y'all are like, you want to do what, when? <laughs> I knew that two days ago you didn't have a voice because of the trait problems. And I know that you're undergoing a biopsy on Monday. And I know that you may lose your voice again. And after I heard your story, I said, we have to share the story because success or failure is not in God's hands, it's in your hands, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. You decide, and then God helps you through it. And you decided, because your children at age 12 and 11 had never spent a Christmas with a clean mother, had they? Never. Never. No. Now they have, now they have. And now eight years later, his son Jamie is driving and he's been he's had his dad for eight years and he doesn't have to say my dad is the drug dealer now Jamie will have to deal with the cancer and and you, have you told Jamie about it yet Danny uh, Jamie knows that I'm sick but he's not sure how bad no uh, I Wow, that, that was a day, that was a day. Um, yeah, I was on steroids for you, and you can tell it, can't you? Wow. Been off steroids two years this month, and that is amazing. Um, I came off over $350 worth of medication so a you're, month you're to been, turn you've my been life around. Years, yeah, I've been clean two years from steroids. But um, that, was, that was a tough day, but we made it through it. Um, I don't think we had to stop and take any breaks. We, we just made it through it, and it was I was determined to mm -hmm. share Danny's story with you. He did pass away not very long after that, and uh, I knew that the biopsy on that Monday after that could change his life forever. And he couldn't speak to you, and he couldn't share his story. So um, it's an honor to have that to have that recording, and thank you, DTC, for allowing us to do that. Today has been a day of memories and looking back. Tomorrow is the day of looking forward. Matt will be here with a very, very positive, inspirational message. On Wednesday, we have a very special guest that I adore. He was Teacher of the Year in Pickens County. Um, Thursday, I have a counselor coming on that I hope will Maybe enlighten we? you. I hope it will enlighten you. I hope it will open your eyes. I hope it will show you no matter how low in the valley you get. You know, Danny Gaddis is a perfect example. Um, he knew me at the very, very worst time of my life when my child was completely addicted to drugs. If you haven't seen the seminars going on, if you see an article about the newspaper, you know, check out, I can't remember the guy's name that Matt Wilson interviewed, but it was a good interview, and it was, it was bringing it to light. This is summer. Take care of your children. Watch your children. Know who your children are spending time with. I didn't do those things, and my child ended up hooked on drugs, and today, four years clean. So um, it is amazing. It is amazing. And happy birthday once again to Dawn. She's still camping in that dad burn tent. She can't be my child. <laughs> she can't be. Today has been um, reflecting. Um, I hope when you look back at your life, you have some great reflections. And I hope as you look toward tomorrow, you have even a brighter day ahead. It's true. From North Georgia now today, I'm Sherry Martin. And I'm Bill Sinyard. He's Bill Senior today. I can't believe that. And y'all, he almost brought a snake on the set again. If y'all ever see me not sitting here, it's because he showed up with another dad burn critter. From North Georgia Now today, we never say goodbye. We say see you later. We will be with you again tomorrow, as always, Monday through Friday. What time? 8.30 to 10 a.m. And I'm not a morning person. 6 to 7.30 p.m. and 1 to 2.30 for you late-nighters. You be here and we'll be here too, only on ETC3.